स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया So in today's video, what we are going to do is look at non-homogeneous problems for heat equation. So non-homogeneous problem for heat equation. Heat equation. Okay. So let us write it down. Problem which you are looking for is this, right? This is equals to F in R n cross zero infinity, okay? And U is essentially zero. We start with zero, okay? On R n cross T equals to zero. So what is the problem here? The problem is. Uh, let us assume that uh, uh, let me do it for one dimension in one dimension uh, I mean the problem looks like this no this is T and that's let's say that's your R so in Rn is basically you know in the base dimension here and that's the time dimension so what it is saying here in the case of one dimension is in this part of the domain okay in this part of the domain you are looking for u such that f is given to you so given f given f okay we are looking for an unknown u u is unknown okay u is unknown so we are looking for an unknown u such that ut minus laplacian of u if you remember laplacian of u is with respect to x that is equals to f okay this is in this part and u is equals to zero on the line so here u has to be zero here in r cross t equals to zero in this line t equals to zero so in this line this has to be zero u has to be zero okay and we want to what we want to do m to produce a formula formula for a solution clear so we want to find a formula uh, which will actually give us a solution yes so let us start doing that first thing first see if you i mean of course we will use our fundamental theorem as you i mean would have guessed till uh, i mean now let's say xt yes this map xt going to the fundamental solution of heat operator uh, phi uh, at the point x minus y t minus s okay so essentially um, i mean t is getting replaced to t minus s yeah so this is a solution of ut minus laplacian of u equals to zero right that's your solution for for y in Rn and 0 less than so s is between 0 and t so what i am trying to say is this let us assume that uh, you are working with a y which is in Rn okay take an arbitrary point y in Rn and take s which lies between 0 and 2 say so s can be anything between 0 and t yeah now you just look at what is phi at the point x minus y t minus s okay this thing of course what phi does that phi is always a solution of ut minus laplacian of u it's a fundamental solution right so where where capital phi is the fundamental solution right it's the fundamental until solution of heat of heat operator see uh, since it is a fundamental solution th this solves the heat equation right and um, why does it do that uh, let's see uh, you see x minus y 
for a given a x in R n, y in R n, x minus y is in R n, yes. So this is in R n and t minus s, see s lies between 0 and t. So t minus s is always positive, yeah. So phi of point in R n times the time variable t, which is, uh, I mean, time variable which is in, uh, which is positive, right. So essentially this particular function will uh, solve the uh, heat equation, fine. That is why you need this. Uh, condition okay because you know otherwise t minus s can be negative in that case this is not uh, i mean this will become zero okay i mean it solves but it will become zero okay so now therefore from our earlier uh, you know discussions we can say i mean we can just think of it like this that for a fixed for a fixed s right for a fixed s if you write the function like this u okay uh, you write it like this u of x t s okay x t s i will uh, explain to you what i mean by this this is given by integral over r n phi of x minus y t minus s okay f of y s dy okay so essentially what am i saying now for any fixed s this this kind of i mean u if you define u like this this u must solve solve ut okay of course xt is there s minus laplacian of u s this is equals to 0 in rn cross s infinity and u evaluated at uh, x t s is f of evaluated at the point s in on r n cross t equals to 0 ok so let me explain to you what i meant by this c essentially here if you remember in Duhamel's principle what did we do uh, if you remember in ODE Duhamel's principle uh, what we did is we wanted to solve the inhomogeneous problem and what did you do we solve the inhomogeneous problem by solving a bunch of uh, homogeneous problems right uh, yes so here also we are doing exactly the same thing we are solving a bunch of homogeneous so is, sorry one small detail uh, thing which I moved this has to be t equals to s yeah so what we did is essentially we solved this problem yeah so we solve this problem you see this is at the point at the level t equals to s any you see i have to do it for zero infinity yeah i have to solve this equation equals to f and this the time variable is between zero and infinity here what am i doing is i am solving the homogeneous problem but what is the initial condition if you remember your do hammer's principle the initial condition is f but not at t equals to i mean we are not evaluating uh, between zero and infinity but evaluating at a particular t equals to s now after that you run s between zero and whatever so here s is between zero and infinity that will give you the whole you know zero infinity thing so that is why you uh, which i am going to define uh, which i defined here that i defined it between integral over r and phi of x minus t uh, t minus s f of y s dy okay is this clear see uh, what i'm trying to say is this if you recall what did your Duhamel's principle do? Duhamel's principle said that if you want to solve a inhomogeneous problem, what you do is you solve a bunch of homogeneous problems, right? But with some initial condition. The initial condition is u. Here, here it becomes homogeneous problem, but here the initial condition changes to u is f, right? At some level t equals to s, yeah? For some level s or tau in our case it was tau right so here i am just writing it to be s okay now what here it is doing is this is a homogeneous problem with this initial condition right okay and um, uh, i am just writing down the solution like this right Th this is just the solution which we got from the earlier uh, you know we did it earlier right yeah this is what we found now here what is this s what does that say you see it, i am evaluating this problem for t equals to s right so that is why i am just writing s like this. so u also depends on s that's all 
okay so that is why this t minus s term is coming so x t this is just a variable that is always there right you do not have to do anything but i this s will represent that i am evaluating the problem okay at t equals to s that's all okay or uh, in between s infinity yeah. now you see if i am asking you just from your intuition that if i want to find a solution of one what do you think that will be it should be uh, that s will run between 0 and t right if s runs between 0 and t that should be your solution right okay so that is what uh, we'll do let's do that so now what does do hammer principle say do hammer's principle say principle says if you remember by od see uh, the thing is you may ask that uh, i didn't prove any do hammer's principle for pd then what am i using here yes you do not have to prove this is what i am doing i am trying to prove do hammer's principle for pd is okay in od the d hammer's principle gives me that i can solve a bunch of homogeneous problem and uh, use that solutions use those solutions to construct a solution of a um, homogeneous problem right so here also i am going to do something similar so what am i going to do i am going to construct a problem like a solution like this let's say you you solve the original inhomogeneous problem and that is given by 0 to t u of x t s okay ds so this x is in rn and t greater than equal to 0 yeah so do hammer's principle from do hammer's principle what do uh, what can i do uh, see do hammer's principle essentially says that i am evaluating this problem at t equals to s now if you just run this s right yeah between 0 and t so basically if you take the s to till 0 and after that indicate it in the whole uh, time interval then we are uh, we should get the solution of this problem okay this is what uh, i am just doing it here okay so essentially u of x t um, i am allowing yes i am allowing my i mean this is t is an arbitrary t yeah this t is between 0 and infinity that's all okay so uh, 0 and t u of x t s ds so this integration is with respect to s right okay so here x t is fixed this integration is with respect to s now so if you rewrite it so rewrite t what do we have we have u of x t should look like this 0 to t okay um, integral over rn phi of x minus y t minus s f of y comma s dy ds again please understand this one how did we get it so let me put it this way how did we achieve this achieved this okay this is our guess huh? this is our guess we did not do anything this is just a guess from the experience of pd experience of od that's what i'm saying yeah this is just a guess this uh, see do hammer's principle whenever i'm saying do hammer's principle says it does not mean that it says this yeah um, i mean from you can actually use do hammer's principle to, to uh, say that it may you sh ust should look like this okay so uh, i put let me put it this way should ust should look like this yeah i don't know if it will look like this what I am trying to say is from our experience of ODs, we know that u of x t, if I want to really find what u of x t, it should look like that. That's what. Yeah. So, what we have to do is we have to prove that, yeah, our proposition is actually indeed true. So, what we want to do, uh, let me write it properly. This, essentially what it means is 0 to t, okay, 1 by uh, if I write it, it is 4 pi t minus s whole power n by 2, okay, and uh, integral over rn e exponential minus x minus y square by t 
टी माइनस एस स्क्वायर एफ ऑफ वाई एस डी वाई डी एस ओके दिस इज फॉर एक्स इन आर एन एंड टी पॉजिटिव क्लियर सो व्हाट वी हैव टू डू नाउ व्हाट इज आवर एम आवर एम इज टू कंफर्म दैट दैट इज दिस इज ट्रू सो लेट्स से दैट दैट्स योर वन ओके सो एम इज टू कंफर्म दैट वन actually solves this problem okay this is one uh, the problem is one so let's say two okay so two actually solves the one okay so this formula u of xt given by two actually solves one so we have to prove this yes so we start with some assumption first assumption on f okay assumption on f so we'll assume f of course it is it is twice differentiable with respect to x once differentiable with respect to t uh, in rn cross zero infinity okay with compact support compact support clear with a compact support so essentially if you take the closure so essentially what it says is uh, f not equals to 0 in this set the set of all those x where f not equals to 0 uh, if you take the closure of this thing that is compact okay that is what it says right okay so we are going to use this thing and uh, to find out that uh, this is indeed the solution so let me write down the theorem first so the theorem so this is the existence theorem okay it says that uh, let u be given by 2 by 2 okay then then uh, number 1 u is in c21 of rn cross 0 infinity clear okay so what it is saying is if you are taking a f okay with a compact support and uh, twice differentiable with respect to uh, x variable once differentiable with respect to one, uh, t variable yes if you are taking f like that so if you remember what is the equation the equation is ut minus laplacian of u equals to f okay if you are taking a f with a compact support and in c21 okay if you are taking it like this then what you are uh, what the equation says uh, the theorem says is the u which you are going to get by 2 so this u this u which you are going to get this one this u is c21 of rn cross 0 infinity so it is twice differentiable with respect to x variable once differentiable with respect to t variable okay moreover ut of xt minus laplacian of u xt that is going to b equals to if you have guessed it it is going to be f of xt okay this is x in rn and t positive okay why this is the case ut of xt minus laplacian of uxt equals to uh, so this, this is the thing see we want this is our hope that the solution which we define like this yeah so this basically num two this should solve our original problem one right okay so 2 uh, must satisfy ut at, at every point ut minus laplacian u equals to f okay that is what i am just writing at every point this should satisfy this yeah and there is a boundary condition if you remember so in, how does it satisfy the boundary condition it can satisfy like this so limit if you take any point um, xt okay xt where you are you going to take from x in rn t positive okay if you are taking any such point and that uh, goes to x not 0 okay let us say x is in rn and t positive right so if you take any such point u of xt that should be equals to 0 if you remember see the equation here is u is 0 on this boundary so if you take any point on the boundary let's say this is the point x not 0 so and uh, you take uh, any sequence okay any sequence uh, here so that sequence must converge um, if it converges to x not 0 then u at that point uh, the, okay those should converge to 0 this is what it is written here clear 
Okay, so let's look at the proof of this thing and then we are done with this uh, inhomogeneous problem. So first thing first, see, uh, I mean, you have this phi, right? You have this phi, uh, sorry, you, ha you have this u. Now, I can just take u t minus Laplacian of u. Yes, I can just calculate this thing and we are done with, right? But I can't do that, right? Because if I'm taking u t minus Laplacian of u, you see, this, this problem has a singularity, right? This has a singularity at t equals to s, right? And this also has a singularity, okay? So essentially, you see, this is a phi. This is capital phi, right? This capital phi that has a singularity at 0, 0. So x equals to y and t equals to s. This has a singularity, okay? So we cannot use, uh, I mean, differentiation under the sign of integration, okay? That cannot be uh, done. So what we do is first of all, we start with a change of variable, okay? So what we are going to do is this. So let's say u of xt is 0 to t integral over rn phi of okay i am just doing a change of variable let's just write it and i will tell you why i can write it like this y of s f of x minus y t minus s dy ds how am i getting this thing see here i have phi of x minus y t minus s f of x y y s right you take y minus x minus y to be z and t minus s to be some some r right take the make the change of variable you see that you are going to get phi of y s f of this y s i s wrote it some variable you can write it to be z r okay that's not a point so you can just do it like this so um, that will be z r and then uh, this changes to x minus y t minus s dy ds okay so this is the change of variable okay now since f has a compact support okay so f is in c2 uh, with with compact support that is there right compact support okay uh, and you see capital phi so the fundamental solution is smooth right where is smooth near s is equals to t right of course that is positive okay so we can compute this thing see ut of xt okay we can compute ut of xt what is it now i am doing the differentiation under the sign of integration yeah uh, what happens first thing first uh, you can write the whole integral together and this t will go inside right so it is become 0 to t integral of our rn yes um, phi of y s this is essentially constant uh, in our case because we are essentially taking the derivative with respect to time there this this nothing will change here because this s is independent of t okay i mean of course it is less than t but it, it, it's not dependent on t that's all okay in that sense so now this becomes f t so the derivative of f with respect to t times x minus y t minus s clear dy ds okay plus if you remember the boundary terms okay plus the derivative with respect to the time variable okay which is one times integral over rn so essentially it is integral over rn uh, phi of y uh, t f of x minus y 0 dy okay let me again explain to you what am i doing i am using uh, integration under the sign of so I am using differentiation under the sign of integration sign of integ integration okay now see one uh, fundamental th way here is this see why we did this change of variable if you understand uh, I mean let me recall again why we were doing this change of variable change of variable change of variable is required is required in order to take the derivative inside okay so essentially essentially what am i doing here as i told you phi has a singularity right phi has a singularity um, and you see this form formula 
here phi has a singularity when x equals to y yeah this x and t is fixed right yes so let's say when uh, and this y is varying in rn so at some point x is going to be y and t is going to be s right so let's say if that is the case then the, you are looking at phi of 0 0 we know that phi is, as a fundamental solution has a singularity at 0 0 yes if you have a singularity that differentiation under the sign of integration won't work here so you can't take ut and you can't hope that ut this time variable will go inside okay it can't, you can't do that so that in, for this formula to hold phi has to be independent of all such singularity so what we did is we changed this variable and wrote it in such a way that we can do all of this okay and that is why this is true now i hope this formula is fine yes and what happens at the point 0 0 the derivative of 0 is 0 so that 0 point is not there with respect to t it is 1 so 1 times this whole function so i just wrote that whole function okay and uh, of course it is evaluated for t s equals to t so that is why t minus t is 0 okay if you remember differentiation under the sign of integration this term is there right you just take it inside this term is there del f del t okay that term is there but i mean this is the constant kind of with respect to t this is essentially a constant so i can take it out and this is the boundary term so essentially if you remember the derivative term with respect to the uh, this thing limit so derivative of t is 1 times the whatever the function is evaluated at the point t equals to s so t equals to s is 0 that is why it is 0 plus derivative of 0 okay derivative at the point 0 is 0 so essentially you do not have that term so ut is looks like this okay so now if ut looks like this also del to u del xi del xj okay how does this looks like at any point xt that's that will look like 0 to t integral over rn okay capital phi of ys okay del to f del xi del xj of at the point x minus y t minus s dy ds this is for i j 1 2 n okay okay so what are we getting here let us just understand what are we getting here see in this case in this case ut look like this right so if you replace ut by uxi the same thing will happen here except this derivative is with respect to 0 t here the derivative is with respect to rn okay so first thing first 0 to t integral over rn that part is always there and you just push the derivative inside right so that's um, i mean in case of second derivative also the same thing has to del 2 f del x i del x j it will be right okay now we will have a boundary term here so the derivative in, in u x i if you are going to take that will be with respect to this variable right integral over rn this this variable okay uh, 0 to t will be there but with respect to this variable but you see there is a trick here what is happening here is this so there will be a boundary term essentially there will be a boundary term right okay mm, but what is happening is this after you have this boundary term if you differentiate it twice so u x i x j again with respect to when you are differentiating then this boundary term vanishes okay so that is why there is no boundary term here so please ver verify that please verify this clear okay so please verify this thing now so if this is the case therefore what you have is u okay u x i x j okay u u x i x j okay u t let's say u t u x i x j uh, they are continuous right they are continuous why they are continuous if i am asking you why they are continuous can you tell me uh, why they are continuous is because phi is a continuous function okay i mean phi does not have a singularity in this part right okay uh, so phi is a continuous function and uh, i mean f is c2 c21 right so twice differentiable with respect to a one variable and once differentiable with respect to t variable okay so that is why ut this whole thing is continuous the whole function is continuous and again u xi xj that is also continuous so they are continuous functions yeah where 
in Rn cross 0 infinity. Clear? Okay. So, if they are continuous, of course, what happens? Therefore, we can say that u is in C21 of Rn cross 0 infinity. Okay. I hope this is clear. Why? Because you see, u is twice differentiable with respect to x variable from here. And u is once res responsible with respect to the t variable and their continuous function. So that is why u is in C21 Rn cross 0 infinity. That's the definition, right? This is the definition. That's the definition. And I hope the continuity part is fine, okay? Uh, this is continuous because f is given to be C2 with respect to x variable and C1 with respect to t variable. So ut and uxi, xj, they are continuous, clear? Okay, now I have to show the second part, part 2, okay? For part 2, what we do is we calculate ut at xt minus x of u x t right i have to show this is equals to f of x t so this is given by 0 to t integral over r n okay uh, the fundamental solution evaluated at y comma s and uh, then i have del del t okay let me write it down and then i will explain to you minus v x okay and uh, what do you have you have okay f of x minus y d minus s dy ds okay. uh, that is there uh, so i have the boundary term also right i have this this boundary term integral over and phi of y of t f of x minus y zero okay uh, so plus plus integral over r n phi of y t f of x minus y okay and zero right x minus y 0 we got right v of y t f of x minus y 0 and t y clear so we have this I'm, ju I, I'm just writing this part i'm just writing it together that's all okay nothing else okay now once i write it see now what am i going to do is i'm going to break it up into three parts because phi has a singularity at 0 0 okay if you remember so i just want to break it up into epsilon t r n okay phi of c here i do not have to work with rn t if i am just taking from epsilon in t then for any x in rn the singularity here is gone right so phi of y s phi does not have singularity in this interval epsilon t t between epsilon t and integral over rn here there is no singularity of phi right okay i will do another change of variable here okay so i will write it like this minus del del s minus delta y of f of x minus y okay t minus s dy ds clear so that is there and plus 0 to epsilon integral over rn phi of y s this part is there uh, epsilon to t was done from now 0 to epsilon has to be taken care of this let me write it like this minus del del s minus delta y okay f of x minus y t minus s dy ds plus uh, okay this part is there plus integral over rn let me write it and then I will explain. Yes, uh, y t f of x minus y 0 dy. Okay. So, this I am writing as i epsilon plus j epsilon plus i j k. So, this all depends on epsilon. So, i epsilon plus j epsilon plus k. Okay. Now, what I am going to do here is this. See, I am doing a change of variable here. So, this t is getting changed to s t minus s let's say this is r right yeah now you just change this variable to s that's that's what i'm going to do so basically r variable del del r and that i'm writing it as s that's all and again similarly this delta x is getting changed to delta uh, z let's say and that z i'm just replacing see 
x minus y let's just write it as z and then this derivative is getting changed to delta y so delta z and that z i'm just writing it's just a variable right so i can write it like y do you understand what i'm trying to say i'm just changing a variable here that's so that's what i'm going to do okay and why this minus sign is coming because of the minus sign here you see t2s is minus sign is there so that is why del del t is minus del del s it will be okay you see t minus s is r essentially yeah this is i mean i wrote it like this but it is minus del del r kind of thing okay so i, I just want to change this variable t minus s to so from t i just want to change it to s so this is why this minus del del s is there and again here if you think about it why there are no change in the sign because uh, one minus will come for one's derivative but the next derivative another minus will come so that will negate each other and that is why the sign remains unchanged okay and then you have f of x minus y t minus s huh? if you are not convinced with what is happening here so i want you to do is again please check this part please check this okay i told you what you need to do now you just do this part yeah now once more detail i want you to understand this some parts i'm just leaving it out yeah this is the intention and some calculations yeah so some calculations are intentionally left please calculations are intentionally left why because you see uh, because the thing is if you do some calculations yourself you understand you will become more uh, fluent with uh, you know what is happening here so this change of variable formulas and uh, you know the integration bypass formula so the more you do it yourself yeah the more fluent you get and that is why i i did not you know um, explicitly um, write down every particular details yeah but that is not very beneficial for you you will just look at the video and it will go on huh? so uh, what i want you to do is um, I, will, I will give you all the required information of how to do it what i want you to do is please check it yourself take a paper and pen just do it yourself and see if this works or not okay so in this case you just have to look at del del t minus delta x of f of x minus y t minus y this you want to write it as minus del del s minus del y f of x minus y t minus s okay this is just a change of variable but what i want you to do is please check this part if this is true or not okay right so now once this is true so what we have is this now let's just calculate to one one part huh? what is first thing first i have to show what i epsilon plus j epsilon plus k this has to tend towards f right this has to be f so uh, this calculation has to be done now let's look at uh, this particular j epsilon first yeah 0 to epsilon integral over r and phi of this particular thing okay so mod j epsilon this is 0 to epsilon integral over r n okay um, what do we have minus where is it one second uh, it is minus del del s minus delta y minus del del s minus delta y of x x minus y t minus s phi of y s okay uh, dy ds okay so let's just take the modulus of that so i want to make this as small as possible okay so if i want to do something like this can i i mean let me write it down and then i will explain uh, then I, I i want you to uh, think about it why can we do th this thing so what am i doing is this i'm taking the maximum of ft okay i know that ft is bounded why because f is twice differentiable with respect to the t variable with compact support with compact support what does that mean it means the set of all those x where fx is non equals to zero the closure of all that set is compact clear so f t f with respect to the t variable that must have so f with respect to t must be bounded right must be bounded okay and this bound we are just writing it to be the maximum of this thing this is i'm just writing it to be infinity okay so it is uh, bounded by l infinity and then you ha also have another bound okay so 
from here this minus del del s of f that i am just bounding it by f t the l infinity of f okay and there is another minus del y of f so the twice derivative of f this i am bounding it by d2 of f and uh, that is uh, also l infinity c f is in c2 is twice differentiable with respect to uh, the x variable with compact support okay so uh, delta y the twice derivative of f with respect to y that is also bounded right so d2 f that is bounded so you just take the infinity norm the maximum norm okay this is there and what is left out left is this 0 to epsilon integral over rn okay and uh, capital phi of y s y comma s dy and d of s okay so that is your uh, left out part i hope this is fine see uh, integral of the whole thing is less than equal integral of 0 to epsilon 0 to integral uh, 0 to rn mod of this whole thing right mod of this whole thing yeah phi is positive so mod of phi is basically phi uh, you just write it so essentially i have mod of minus del del s minus delta y of uh, f of x minus y t minus s something like this yeah this mod is there now you see this is what this is basically uh, the first derivative of f so basically mm, this is less than equal i can take it to be uh, del del s of f okay uh, plus uh, delta y of f if you think of it like this yeah and then uh, this is just a derivative of f with respect to t variable so f t one variable and uh, it, has, it has a compact support so this is bounded okay what is the bound it is the uh, l infinity bound of f t right l infinity bound uh, so basically the uh, maximum maximum of f t in r n okay uh, r sorry and here uh, delta so this i am just taking the max d2 u okay uh, i am taking the maximum of d2 u so this delta y of f this this can be bounded by this okay d2 uh, u the l infinity norm of this so l infinity norm essentially here what i meant is uh, the maximum okay f so whenever i am writing infinity l infinity i will say it means it is the maximum of f clear that is fine on the whatever the domain we are working with so i hope this uh, calculation is clear delta y of f is getting uh, you know dominated by d2 of f yes and uh, f of this is f s or f of t i i mean it's basically f with respect to the second variable okay so and that is uh, always bounded by the maximum norm of f t okay so that is what i'm doing so you just take this thing and you have left out is 0 to epsilon integral over r and phi of y s d y d s okay now i hope you know what um, i mean uh, this what happens to this particular thing uh, of course this is the integral over r and phi of y s yeah what is it integral over r and phi of y s if you remember um, it is one no only this part only this part okay only this part is one why because it's a fundamental solution so integral of a fundamental solution if you remember since integral over rn okay phi of ys ds dy sorry this is one okay for each t positive hence what do you get from here we get so since this is true hence we get this is some constant right i can write it as some constant constant time integral over uh, 1 0 to epsilon ds so that is epsilon so c times epsilon clear i hope this is fine okay so now again again i have to evaluate what i epsilon is mod i epsilon what is i epsilon mod i epsilon is zero, uh, epsilon to t okay and then you have integral over rn minus del del s minus delta y of phi of y s mm, okay let's let's write it like this and uh, you have f right f of x minus y t minus s dy ds clear okay now this particular thing one sec what do i have i have uh, i have this this is i epsilon right if i remember i epsilon is a, the same thing right this this whole thing is i epsilon okay 
I mean, I just wrote, uh, wrote phi here, but anyways, it's i epsilon. Epsilon to t integral over rn, yes. Okay, fine. This is i epsilon. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use integration by parts. Integration by parts on um, what? On t. Okay, integration by parts with respect to t. So, the one variable integration by parts. Okay, what will happen here is this. Let's, let's do that. So, if you do integration by parts on this variable, what is going to happen? This minus sign is gone. The derivative will be pushed into that and that the minus sign is gone. If you remember, see, uh, where is it? This is your i epsilon. See, j epsilon we calculated already. Mod j epsilon is small. i epsilon I want to calculate. What is i epsilon? i epsilon is this part, right? i epsilon is this part. It is phi of yt minus del del s minus delta y of f x minus y t minus s dy dx. Okay. So, while you, when you do integration by parts, if you remember, the uh, you push the derivative on the other part and that is why this minus sign is no more. Okay. So, it becomes, let me write it, it becomes um, epsilon to t integral over rn, okay, and minus del del s minus delta y, okay, capital phi of y s, okay, f of, uh, what will happen here is x minus y, t minus s, dy ds right so nothing changes here uh, it's just the derivative uh, here indication by part and uh, what else is changing oh, one second yeah now let me um, so this is there i have the boundary terms now so on the boundary plus integral over rn phi of y s is in this case, the boundary uh, term is epsilon f of x minus y t minus epsilon dy, right? And there is another boundary term corresponding to t. So, that is minus integral over rn phi of y t f of x minus y 0 dy okay how to how am i getting all of this i am getting all of this just by integration so this is integration by parts huh? and what sort of integration by parts this is just a one dimension and integration by parts i am doing it on the t variable okay if you just do the t integration by parts on the t variable it looks like this right this changes sign to minus to plus and then you have the boundary term the boundary terms evaluated at boundary so t evaluated uh, s by evaluated at t uh, sorry Sorry, S evaluated at where is it? Uh, T and S evaluated at epsilon. So it goes on like this. Yeah. Okay. So once we have something like this, so this is this term I have seen somewhere, right? We have seen somewhere. Where did we saw this term? You see, this is K. You see, this this term and this term is same, no? Okay, so this is k. So i epsilon, if you do not take just the modulus, let's just take the without the mod, let's say i epsilon. This is equals to this, this is equals to this, which by integration by part is this. So i epsilon plus k, this is k, right? So i epsilon plus k is essentially this part plus this part. Okay, because k is integral over r and phi of y t f of x minus y is 0 dy. See. So this is k. So i epsilon plus k should be this two term, right? Okay. So hence, therefore, therefore, uh, these two terms can be written as integral over rn. So i epsilon plus k, that I am writing it to be integral over rn, integral over rn, capital phi of y epsilon f of x minus y t minus epsilon uh, d of y okay why i will write it like this see if i am taking the s variable from epsilon to t what happens to this particular term if you if you think about it carefully phi is a fundamental solution 
s is from epsilon to t okay see s is not touching zero here so what is happening is this particular term is becoming zero because phi is a fundamental solution of the heat operator right so fund so phi del phi del s minus del y of phi that is going to be zero so this part particular term vanishes right this particular term vanishes okay so i am only left out with this term and this is what i just wrote here okay so if i add all of this therefore what happens is therefore ut at any point xt minus delta of uxt okay is equals to limit epsilon tends to zero okay integral over rn phi of y epsilon f of x minus y t minus epsilon dy okay this is what we are going to get this is what we are left out with what is there remaining yeah okay j epsilon is c epsilon right yeah so that as epsilon tends to zero c epsilon goes to zero so i do not have to worry about it all i need to do is i need to worry about i epsilon plus k which is this yeah okay so c uh, let me again recall ut minus delta x of u is i epsilon plus j epsilon plus k j epsilon is c epsilon so this is very small i epsilon plus k this is what i need to make very small okay as epsilon raised to zero so i epsilon plus k will be limit epsilon raised to zero integral over rn of this because i epsilon plus k of this is this okay now here i am going to write one thing which i want you to verify as epsilon tends to zero okay let's I mean this you need to verify okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down what is the value of this thing so the value of this just take one second just think about it what happens to the value okay pause the video think about it and then come back so let's just think straight about this thing if you are taking epsilon tends to zero inside the integral what is happening is uh, let's say this becomes phi of y zero f of x minus y t dy right that's what is going to happen so this if you integrate this thing what is going to happen uh, and take the limit as epsilon tends to zero this will actually go to f of x t this is what we need to do okay um, rn and t positive okay why are this is coming okay uh, so, so sorry about the other part huh? you do not have to take it inside so why this is coming to, to look at why this is coming what you do is you take the integral over in rn phi of y epsilon f of x minus y t minus epsilon dy minus integral f of x t okay this particular thing you have to make it small enough as epsilon tends to zero so uh, this thing uh, you can write it as uh, i mean integral over rn phi of y epsilon f of x minus y t minus epsilon minus phi of y epsilon f of x t right dy i hope this is fine why i can write it because you see essentially uh, f of x t i can write it as times one which is integral of phi of y epsilon dy okay and then i can take it inside because x and t is independent of y and epsilon so i can just take it inside and i can write it like this clear this is the fundamental solution right so the integral of the fundamental solution is one i'm just using that part now uh, you, you see this is becoming integral over rn okay uh, phi of i'm doing a rough calculation here i want you guys to actually do the whole calculation okay f of x minus y t minus epsilon proper calculation here please do it yourself i mean that is how you learn actually otherwise you won't learn anything yeah so phi of x minus x y f of x minus t t minus epsilon minus f of x t dy now you see this particular thing since f is continuous okay since f is continuous you can make this thing as small as possible so this will be less than some let's say delta okay and then you will be left out with integral over rn phi of y epsilon dy which is one so that will be delta clear so what is happening is this particular integral as epsilon tends to zero goes to f of t x t is this clear i mean i i hope this is extremely i mean clear right now okay this calculation you just do it here what am i using i am just using f is continuous right 
continuous with respect to x and t okay this is what i am going to use here so this is fine so the second part is done now for the third part so for the third part okay what do we have uh, you see one small detail we have to note here that for small part, the third part is limit uh, xt going to x uh, where is it i am taking some point right x not zero and uh, x is in rn rn and t positive okay and uh, u of xt this is zero this we have to show for each x not in rn this is what we need to show right okay so let us look at what we can find here yeah so if we need to show this thing um, what is our u of xt u of xt so this actually follows directly from the definition you do not have too much 0 to epsilon integral over rn uh, capital phi of y is the fundamental solution of phi y s f of x minus y t minus s dy ds right this is what u of xt is now if you take the limit as xt goes to x not 0 okay so you have to take the limit at as xt goes to x not 0 in this particular thing so you see here you can do this or you can take the u has a compact support right so u with respect to t the maximum norm l infinity norm with respect to t see i don't care about x anymore i'm just taking the norm with respect to t okay so that if i'm taking here the maximum between 0 and t uh, this norm this is going to get uh, see f has a compact support right with respect to t so i can take that maximum f has a compact c how do i put it um, here see if c21 with compact support okay so what that means is f is zero outside a compact set so essentially what is happening here is uh, a continuous function on a compact set attains a maxima okay and that maxima is with respect to both because this is continuous with respect to x and t both right so uh, you can take the maximum of f and you can push it outside right so that you can do let's say if you do that then you have norm of f l infinity the maximum of f okay with respect to both variables the maximum of f and then you are left out with is 0 to t capital phi of y s okay dy ds this is integral over r n okay now this particular thing is one so that will give you norm of f l infinity 1 0 2 t d s which is t okay now uh, once you have this thing now you see as which actually tends to 0 as t tends to 0 you see here x t t tends to 0 and x tends to x not u of x t must goes to 0 and uh, the maximum of this thing goes to 0 so u of x t has to goes to go to 0 right as t tends to 0 then you are done clear so this is the end of um, this theorem so if you want to put it together okay let me put the theorem properly so of course what is the formula then you have formula if you have this equation ut minus laplacian of u equals to f in rn cross 0 infinity u is g on rn cross t equals to 0 okay so here i am just changing this thing a little bit here i have f and here i have g the initial condition initially i was taking it to be 0 for our problem here i am taking it to be the most general one f and g okay and uh, and f is smooth with compact support smooth of course smooth means here c21 okay with with compact support 
and g is continuous with respect to both variables okay continuous then let let's write down what is the uh, i mean solution of this problem so the solution of this problem is the solution of ut minus laplacian of u equals to 0 u equals to g okay plus the solution of this problem ut minus laplacian of u equals to f and um, u equals to 0 okay the solution of this is this i can just break it up here for this problem we already know what is the solution this problem we already know what is the solution if you add it up you will get the original solution so basically with any solution u of x t uh, so let's say that's your three okay so if u solves one two three then u of x t will look like this integral over r n you know what is the formula for this this is v of x minus y t g of y dy plus integral over 0 to t this formula over r n duhamel okay v of x minus y t minus s f of y s dy ds clear okay so this is how you solve the inhomogeneous heat equation yes so in next lecture next week what we are going to do is uh, we are going to end the heat equation part with uh, looking at uh, the um, you know maximal principle maximal principle regularity of solution regularity okay uh, and uh, of course um, you know how do you prove maximal principle and regularity this is proved using a mean value uh, theorem okay just as laplacian okay but the thing is this uh, for heat uh, thing all mean value theorem maximum principle and regularity are quite complicated as opposed to the laplacian okay so uh, we'll do that in next uh, week video thank you